All right, you won't believe how many questions I get asked on all my videos. What is this overlay? What is that reference view? What sorcery is this? So I get tons of questions like that. And someone on my Discord asked me why I don't do a tutorial on how I use PureF. And this is exactly what I did. Before we jump in, I first like to invite you to a very amazing Discord community called the CG Lounge. Lots of talented artists, a great community and a fun place to check out. The link is in the description below if you want to check it out. Another quick recommendation is to watch the video in full length first because it's quite condensed with lots of information and then check out the chapters and jump into specific topics. So without further ado, let's jump into Pure Ref and have some fun. All right, so before we get into the fun stuff, I first want to show you the basics of Pure Ref because maybe some people watching this now don't know what Pure Ref is and I just want to quickly show you what it's all about, why everyone just loves it. So um, obviously you go to your browser, you look for your references you like and all you got to do now is just um, click and drag them into Pure Ref and they will, or it will try to find the high resolution images of that. And you can see that is loaded in. Um, if I hold D and click, you can see it's uh, quite large. It's a 4K image. And you can do the same uh, for Google. So let's say I'm dragging in the Vespas here. You can see it tries to find them. Most of the time it does find the high resolution images. Not always, but you can see it takes some time. This one is a nice and, and, and large one. Um, and you can also see though that you get all this uh, weird Google stuff from Google. So I, a nice trick what I always do, I, I sort them by name, I control Alt and N, you can see that um, they get sorted. And then at some point you see all the Google stuff and you can just delete it. If you hit spacebar, it will um, zoom out everything and fit it. Obviously now you can see we have large images, small images, um, but let's just drag a few more in, in here. Um, let's go maybe to ArtStation, Click, click on a random person's image here, just drag that in and you can see that gets loaded in. Or for my Venus plan, which I used in my previous tutorial. And you can see it's filling up quite fast. Let's just sort again by name, um, Alt, Control, and N. And then find the Google stuff, delete it. And now you can see Control A selects all images, Spacebar frames all images. Um, but now we want to have the same size, right? Because we want to, we don't want them to be like all over the place. So what you can do, um, um, select all images, Control A, and then you hit um, Control Alt and Up, which will then normalize all your images to the same size or at least the same height. Um, and if you then do Control and P, it will pack them nicely together. You can hit um, Spacebar again to zoom in and you can see everything is nicely packed. And this is essentially the basics I use. If you hold Z and click and drag, you can zoom in and out. So that is pretty much all the basics. Um, so now what you want to do, let's say you want to align them. So you can, obviously you can just click and drag and move them outside. Let's say I want to snap this to the um, Vespa on the top, right? You can hit um, shift and spacebar and it will just jump to um, the, the bordering images. So that's a nice trick already. The same for the Venus plan. So um, I want to snap them together, uh, shift and space, drag, and then it just snaps together. So a quick thing you can do is hit control N to create a node. Let's just call this Venus. And drag it you can scale it by alt control and, and click and dragging like that and obviously you can do the same for the vespa and then you have obviously the random artwork here and the, the, the car so another neat thing what i always do as well is i crop images because i don't want to see all the stuff uh, potentially so obviously you can zoom the image in like that um, but you, you just want to have the car essentially so what you can do is hold c to crop a region around the car which just isolates that and if you change your mind, if you want to uh, switch things around, you can hold V to move your image within the crop region, or you can hold Shift V to scale it. So there's a nice little trick as well. Let's say we are in Substance Painter, which I just brought up, right? So what I see lots of people do, they just um, um, make this image smaller, like the Pure Ref window, and they just most of the time just place it in a corner like that and then have your reference in here. And then sometimes they just zoom into this one and then they have it floating um, and they work, right? So if we, obviously now we wanna go back to the Venus here at the bottom, frame this maybe, and you can see now by selecting um, keyboard left and right, you can jump to the next image, but you can see this. So um, I actually never use Pure Ref like that. So what I always do here, you can hit Control and Y um, and then just hit OK. And what happens now is um, the pure ref window kind of disappears and all you see is um, your reference images. And at first you might see, I uh, think, what the hell is this? It's way too weird. Um, but the cool thing is um, it's all now floating in, in front. So what I always do, I do hit control A 
and then I just scale everything down. You can obviously hit P again to, to frame it, but you can see um, it just everything gets a little bit bigger. But once you have it scaled down enough, you can just move them to the side and they are really unobtrusive in your view, right? So you can move them. Let, let's say I, I just work, work in the Venus project, so I don't want to really bother with these images. So um, what I then do, you can hit um, Control Alt and S to stack them. So they're now all on top of each other. So I don't see them. If you want to um, pack them again, you just hit Control P and they get unpacked. But Control Alt S just stacks them. So they are out of the way. And now let's say I want to uh, work with the Venus. I can just drag it over, make it large and work with that. Right. So that's super helpful. I use that all the time. And again, I use cropping as well. So if I just want the teeth, I just do this, right? Move it over, hit V to adjust it. And it, it's always on top. So it's super helpful uh, to work like that. And if you want to reset the crop, it's Control Shift C to reset it. And then you can obviously just scale it down again. It uh, depends a little on your workflow, right? Um, and then what I always do as well is um, hitting Control, uh, sorry, Shift and Alt. And if you then click and drag on the image, you actually flipping it into the direction you're dragging. You can also flip up or down um, like that. It's super helpful, especially if you're working in portraits. I do that also all the time. Move things around, um, flip them. And obviously you can also hit control and rotate them if you uh, want to do this maybe and maybe then crop it again to just have it vertically aligned and all these uh, fun things, right? So control um, shift C to reset the crop, control shift T to reset the transform, and then you can just scale it down. So this is um, how I use this feature. So in ZBrush, I have my pure ref board for Joaquin Phoenix and don't judge my um, sculpting skills. Uh, if you follow me on Twitch, you can see how uh, drastically I'm failing at sculpting. But anyways, um, if you have your pure ref here, right? So obviously I always love to use um, the control Y feature, hit OK, everything gets overlaid. And again, I can just scale them really small, move them in the corner and they don't really bother me much. You can stack them or reduce them or whatever. Um, so I have them separated by front and left. So what I can do now, let's say um, I, I want this guy, uh, this front image, so I can bring it up, right? So what I want to do now is maybe match the features, but how, how would you do this if this is on in the front? So the first thing I always do, you can hit um, Control, Alt, and Shift and click and drag to change opacity like that. And obviously you can also crop it. So what I do then, I maybe crop it in the middle like this, and now it's cropped, right? So now the next thing what I'm doing is probably trying to align it as good as possible like this. And then you can change again opacity maybe just a little or you just leave it depends actually how you want to do it. Um, and then the next trick what you can do is um, hit control and T. This is a bit more tricky because this will now ignore um, the mouse event. So essentially pure ref is completely not responsive to your mouse. So if you hit OK, you can now see that my mouse changed to the um, ZBrush again, which is perfect. So now what I can do, I can essentially just uh, move things around and I can essentially obviously try to not move my um, ZBrush, but it doesn't matter. But then I can just scale up my brushes and I can try to align it based on the reference from PureF. Obviously now um, it's a different scale because I move things down, but I guess you get the idea. You can use Spotlight for this as well, but I think in PureF um, it works quite nicely and you can quite fast um, use this thing, right? So now obviously the question comes up, how do I get out of this mode? And the only way to do it is if you go to your taskbar and you hover over the pure ref icon and then you can disable the transparent mouse feature which is i believe this one and once you did that you are back in the pure ref window and you can hit Control alt and shift to bring back opacity which is quite nice and again you can always um flip your images and go to the other side like this and that so now I'm in Maya, right? So as you can see, I have Woody here and um, this is the reference I'm working off from. So I just I can just make it larger quite easily. And then again, I can use the crop feature to uh, crop it out and potentially um, I can just um, scale these other images down. Let me just try to select them like that, scale them down, or I can hit first control P to get them, oh, sorry, control and alt up to get them to the same size and then control P to make them nicely placed and then just scale these things down. And then I have my floating pure ref window on top here, right? So another cool thing what you can do is you can hold S and click and you get a color picker and you get the RGB values of that um, 
picked pixel. Essentially, you can copy them and just paste them. So this is also quite a handy reference if you want to get exactly that red tone. Obviously, there's light contamination, um, but this is something also I use all the time. And if you want to open the source, the raw image of this, uh, you can hit Control Shift and O to actually open the browser where you grab that image from. And I grabbed it from filmgrab.com. And another handy feature is you can actually export your images. So let's say I want to export all these images. You hit Control Shift and I to export and you can select the location um, and then you get them to your disk, right? You can add some cropping or whatever you did and it just exports them to, your, to the disk or to the location you chose. And something I would like to highly recommend is you can always right click the images to go into um, your context window and look for all the shortcuts yourself. You can see settings as control and U, open that up and then you have all your settings. Obviously you can change your colors, which I find the dark preset is quite nice. You can change this obviously. And then also the key bindings. So this is, um, if you really study them and look at them, you get super familiar with everything and it will be way more fun if you know your shortcuts for PureF. So now that you know that I am using PureF and that this overlay thing is called PureF, um, if you guys watching this video now see any comment in any future videos what reference video I'm using, I will really hope that you could um, reply instead of me that is a PureF because I have always been replying and it, this question comes up all the time. But anyways, thanks for watching my video and I will see you in the next one which will be another Substance Painter one um, with another asset similar to the Plant Eater version but a little bit different, right? With anchor points and all the fun stuff actually. So I hope I will see you in the next video and obviously leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.